Chaksu Unmilita Myena Tas my Sri Gurudena Maha Yama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaulavani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Turubhischa Kripa Sindhu Vevacha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnavevyo Namaha Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhaktarindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So, to uh, try to describe the glories and the activities of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, is like pro approaching a, a, a huge mountain and trying to understand what's on the mountain. <laughs> it is practically impossible to even touch a small part of the unlimited glories of his divine grace. And we can see that in our own lives that this International Society for Krishna Consciousness, as it was established and as, as it had developed and as it spread, and then as it continues to spread, is all by the um, intelligence, strong desire, determination, and self-sacrificing attitude of uh, Srila Prabhupada, acting on the orders of his spiritual master, his divine grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and coming to the Western world to fulfill that mission of, of spreading Lord Chaitanya's movement around the world, especially in the Western countries. Um, his divine grace at the age of 70 years old, when that is a time for practically everyone who reaches such an age is to slow down in life, to maybe retire from active activities and to live a more simple and more, what we say, confined lifestyle. But that was quite the opposite. What people do when they're young, in their early age, as an adventure in their life or as a projection to fulfill their desires, Srila Prabhupada took up the mission of his spiritual master and underwent so many hardships in terms of travel meeting different people, establishing his mission, developing his, his uh, society by writing hundreds of books, translations from the Vedic scriptures, his own commentaries uh, based on his realized knowledge of Krishna consciousness coming from the authorities such as the Acharyas who have spoken on such topics, adding his own realizations and comprising books such as Srimad Bhagavatam, 18,000 verses, Bhagavad Gita, which is famous all around the world. Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, what he presented was unlike and unique compared to what has been presented in the past by many, many scholars, academicians, and even religionists on the Bhagavad Gita. And this was proof by so many persons after reading, coming in contact with this scripture given by Srila Prabhupada. And he had titled it Bhagavad Gita as it is, the Bhagavad Gita as Krishna presented it without any change without any addition or what we say, uh, alteration. And that the proof of the authentic, authenticity and the, and the sacred uh, ex explanations given by Srila Prabhupada is shown by how many persons who came in contact with Bhagavad Gita 
actually became devotees of Krishna after that. Um, Prabhupada's books are his um, expressions of his realization on Krishna consciousness according to Shastra and at the same time his ecstasies in his relationship with Krishna in devotion. Um, we can speak from so many different angles on Srila Prabhupada's glories. I guess, well, I guess the, more, the, the thing that really resonates with the miraculous part of Srila Prabhupada's life is how much difficulty he endured at the same time pushed on a, a very difficult society dealing with persons who came from backgrounds that were completely opposite from what the scriptures were teaching and what he wanted us to adopt. Um, sometimes we hear that, you know, the glories of Srila Prabhupada. Someone asked Srila Prabhupada, can, do you have any mystic powers? Can you show, can you make a display of mystic powers? Because sometimes people, when they meet a saintly person, they want to see some, something unusual, something out of the ordinary, something magical. When Prabhupada was asked that question, he pointed to a group of his students who were present and said, these are my mystic powers. They, I have turned the hippies into you know, devotees of Krishna, devotees of God. They were previously filled with all activities that were sinful, and now they are free from all those activities, chanting the glories of the holy names of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and working very enthusiastically in devotion to Krishna. <coughs> So uh, this was Srila Prabhupada's, one of his main glories. There were so many, but this is one. How he was able to transform. And many times there is one incident where um, a group of spiritualists came to see Srila Prabhupada who were from India and who had been doing their own preaching in America. And they wanted to congratulate Prabhupada for his success in spreading Krishna consciousness by explaining that, you know, we never thought it would be possible to speak these pure teachings of Krishna to these Westerners. Because many of them had been preaching something less than in order to patronize the mood of compromise, which was very much prominent in the Western civilization where people want spirituality, but they want the same time have their material life intact. And Prabhupada listened to their praise, but then he turned it on. He said, if you know what is actually the truth why are you cheating people? Why are you not giving them the absolute knowledge, the true knowledge, the clear knowledge that Sri Krishna presented in the Bhagavad Gita? So Prabhupada was pure in his devotion, determined and uncompromising in presenting the knowledge as was given by Sri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita and also by Srila Vyasadev in Srimad Bhagavatam. Personally, I can say that this is one of the things that attracted me most about Srila Prabhupada. There was no uncertainty in what he spoke. He spoke with surety, he spoke with conviction, and he backed up everything he said with scriptural evidence. And this is something he also would also speak about how important it is that when you speak, 
you give authority to the words you're talking. And that will be the difference between what we say, people who will say whatever they feel and or else we're saying what Krishna said. And Prabhupada said, I am only saying what Krishna said. Or I'm only saying what other great souls have said about Krishna. And of course, along with that, Prabhupada was very practical in understanding how to apply spiritual knowledge according to time, place, and circumstances so he could deal with current situations and understand clearly how this, the Krishna conscious philosophy is to be applied accordingly. And that you can personally experience as you read his Bhaktivedanta purports in the Srimad Bhagavatam. As you read those purports, you see how he refers to time, place, and circumstance in terms of the present in order to confirm what, is hap what has happened in the past and what is the solution and the understanding that can be applied in the present situation. <laughs> this is Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada is a rare personality, a highly empowered personality by Sri Krishna himself. I was fortunate at one time, many years ago, when I was in Sri Mayapur during the uh, GBC time where the GBC would meet, this would be during the Lord Chaitanya festival, Gaur Purnima time. And many, many leaders were there at that time. There was the gathering that we had. It was in the room of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, all glories to his lotus feet. And different devotees were speaking about the glories of Srila Prabhupada. One such person spoke, and this person was had done personal service for Srila Prabhupada. His, name's, his name was Bhavananda Prabhu. And he was describing how one time when he was with Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada was speaking about something he never speaks about in public. But he was just speaking and he was explaining how Krishna encouraged him to come to the material world to do this work of preaching the Lord Chaitanya's mission at this particular time. And the exchange between Krishna and Prabhupada, as Prabhupada described it, is very interesting because as Prabhupada described it, he was not at all enthusiastic to leave Krishna and to leave the spiritual world to come. But Krishna encouraged him that you are meant to do this work and I will also not only empower you, but I will also protect you. So Prabhupada, after describing a little bit about how he came to the material world, and you might say, well, you know, how is that possible? But this was possible in Srila Prabhupada. He was not just an, a great saint. He had knowledge of past, present, and future. And many times you can see that when you read his books, when he wrote them back in the 70s, and you see what's happening at the present time, you can see how many times he wrote about what will come up in the future as we advance in Krishna consciousness, and as society becomes more and more materialistic. And you see, many of his statements are very prophetic and right on according to, you know, exactly what he said. So Prabhupada was a empowered personality, but along with all his greatness, he had this natural humility to never take credit for anything he ever did. And when he was praised or glorified, he would say, I don't know what I have done, but I can say for one thing, I didn't change anything 
that was given to me by my spiritual masters. I'm simply presenting the truth according to, you know, time, place, and circumstance. And this is my only credit that I am following strictly the previous spiritual teachers. So his natural humility, along with his greatness, was really made up Srila Prabhupada's, let me say, way of presenting the truth of Krishna consciousness through his lectures, through his books, and in various ways. The life of Srila Prabhupada should be studied. There's a beautiful, very expertly presented seminar called Founder Acharya. It's a 10 lesson presentation put together by my god brother, wonderful devotee, His Holiness, His Grace, uh, Sureshwar Prabhu, who has spent years in developing this presentation. And uh, it's all about the life of Srila Prabhupada, how it all came about from the very beginning to the, to the time when Srila Prabhupada left the planet and how it is relevant to us today, the words of Srila Prabhupada. This is, an, I think, one of the most important points that should be explained that what Prabhupada taught and what he lived is still relevant today. Sometimes people mistakenly think that whatever Prabhupada gave was relevant at the time when he was there. Now we need something new, we need something different. Um, they, this is simply, this kind of thinking is simply due to lack of understanding Prabhupada's words and how he presented those words, not only for according to the particular time it was, but for all times. And as Srila Prabhupada said himself, my books will be the law books for the next 10,000 years. In other words, law books mean spiritual law books, anything you want to know about spirituality. And every, any, any questions that you may have, whether it comes in terms of understanding or application, Everything is there in Srila Prabhupada's words, his books, his life example, and how he imparted that to his followers. These are the glories of Srila Prabhupada are as unlimited as uh, you might say the sky itself. No one can find the end to the sky. So to try to speak about Srila Prabhupada's glories is like trying to catch the moon by holding a mirror up to the moon and seeing the moon's reflection in the mirror. It's not possible to even come close to glorifying Srila Prabhupada. And we can, a lot of times people speak nice words about other people, but our words are simply a confirmation of what he did and what is still being done through, through him by empowering his disciples to carry on his mission of spreading our Chaitanya's teachings all around the world. So if we want to really understand what this Krishna conscious movement is about, study Srila Prabhupada's books, read them, study them, understand them, learn to apply them. And then also part two was to learn about the personality of Prabhupada. Because if we, we learn only about what he gave as apart from who he is, we will, we will now have a complete understanding of Prabhupada. <laughs> knowing the person, Prabhupada, along with knowing what that person gave, 
is the complete understanding of Srila Prabhupada. At least that comprises the categories for complete understanding. Uh, and there has been so many books written by many, many of his, his wonderful disciples and others showing what Srila Prabhupada did and who he actually was and how he presented Krishna consciousness. So um, it's an ocean of devotion that is given to us in the form of transcendental knowledge. So there's much we can say, but I'll stop here because I think we could go on forever <laughs> speaking about Srila Prabhupada. And there are innumerable stories in the life of Srila Prabhupada that are full of amazing lessons that are so much relevant to our development and understanding of the knowledge of the practice of Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada taught us so much, not only through his books, but by his personal example. His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. <laughs>